This is the spotted lanternfly. It's a plant hopper, meat riding type bug that is native to China and Vietnam, and it is your civic duty as an American to kill these things on sight. No prisoners. That might seem like a really extreme stance, but I'm being realer than a fishing rod right now, so let me try to get you up to speed. If you're in or around the American Northeast, you probably already know about these things and the scourge on our great nation that they represent. And the problem is unfortunately only growing. Spotted lanternflies used to be, uh, not here. Whenever I was in the North East as a kid, it was with a sky mercifully free of these affronts to God. But when I was in New England earlier this year, they were scrambling around en masse in a way I've literally never seen before there. They first showed up in 2014, and I've been to the upper half of the OG 13 colonies since then. But recently, going there is like playing whack-a-mole whenever you go outside. These things land on you like the military built an airstrip on your back. I put out a tweet to try and get the word out, basically get out of my country and kill these on sight. Discriminating against these things is like the only anti-immigration stance I have, and some of you in the replies knew exactly what the deal was. I salute y'all on the front lines. But when it comes to spotted lanternflies, more just needs to be done. So I really wanted to spread the word here since I'm able, and also as an outlet, because y'all listen to me scream about almost anything for some reason. The spotted lanternfly has a long history as an invasive species. If you're not on that unit of seventh grade biology yet, an invasive species is when, like, a plant, or animal in this case, is taken from its natural habitat, where that animal is part of a food chain and ecosystem has traits suited to that environment, and natural predators that control their population gets put into a bit of a situation where either on purpose or by accident, the animal ends up in a different habitat that it is not native to, where their evolved traits make them very well suited to thrive in that environment, but with no predators to keep that animal's population in check from multiplying rapidly and flipping the balance of an ecosystem onto its neck, breaking its spine. The most famous example of an invasive species is probably the cane toad. They're originally native to the Americas and were artificially introduced by people into places like Australia as a form of pest control. The main reason for this in Australia was they had done this successfully before, where introducing cactus moss into the ecosystem helped fight the invasive plant of prickly pears. I think that was a tactical grenade in Call of Duty once. And the idea with cane toads is that if they introduced them, they might eat these specific beetles that were getting fat as shit by just gorging on Australian sugarcane crops. So in 1935, a hundred or so cane toads were imported to Australia from Hawaii, with several more batches being released into Australia in the years after, and it became kind of a disaster. It's arguably an even worse fuck-up than the Australian losing their war on emus. Not only did cane toads not help with the beetle problem at all, but they multiplied rapidly and spread all over Australia. They were spreading diseases to animals in the area that they didn't have defenses for, and of course, there were also no natural predators to help stop the cane toad spread. This was made even worse by the fact that that cane toads secrete a strong-ass toxin that would probably kill most things willing to try to eat them. Man-made efforts to deal with the cane toads in Australia have pretty much all failed, and it goes on to this day. And now cane toads have more power in Australian politics than their own federal government. With that refresher in mind, let's circle back to spotted lanternflies. These pricks are a good example of an invasive species crossing international borders completely under our squid-sized noses. Nobody brought them there on purpose, they just kind of showed up one day. Like, they probably hitched a ride on planes or boats, just joining Luffy's pirate crew to cross the high seas and cause problems on purpose in places they were never invited to. Lanternflies naturally eat what's called a tree of heaven, but they have the ability to post up on a ton of other trees, as well as crops like soybeans and grapes. They're distant evolutionary cousins of Kirby because they all eat a lot of different shit. Regarding its rap sheet as an invasive species, the spotted lanternfly was first spotted, lol, in South Korea in 2006 and was legally labeled a pest there since 2000. When it got to Korea, it started eating up to 65 different plant species with no predators in the area to slow down their championship run. It's a similar story in Japan, where in 2009, lanternflies were first seen, and in 2013, they were confirmed to have a significant foothold in the country, having spread very far. They've been identified as a possible threat in Europe, Australia, and parts of Canada as well, so this information is relevant to a lot of folk. But I want to focus in on these snot-nosed fucks kicking around in America, because that's my home turf, and also because the expansion of the bug is arguably a threat in America the most. In 2014, spotted lanternflies were found crawling all over Pennsylvania, and it was immediately identified as a possible threat to the state's logging, grape, and fruit tree industry, with the most toe-curling risk being the spread of the lanternflies' eggs from them getting laid in large amounts on smooth bark and stone. Runk with an N. In 2019, the University of Pennsylvania estimated that the spotted lanternfly in Pennsylvania alone resulted in 
hundreds of millions of dollars in agricultural losses and to the state's forestry industry. They have been an ongoing bungee marathon issue though, and it's far from isolated to Pennsylvania these days. As early as 2018, the lanternfly had been spotted in other states. And according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, as of today, it's been confirmed to be killing innocent plants in Connecticut, Delaware, Indiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New York, Virginia, New Jersey, Ohio, North Carolina, Rhode Island, and West Virginia. It's expected to only spread to more states, and the rate of expansion has been fast, so I expect this video will only become relevant to more people as time keeps getting its steps in. If you're wondering exactly what's at stake, what they're gobbling up here stateside, it's a lot of native plants in the U.S., as well as crops that, with these lanternflies just tearing them to pieces, could potentially harm our food supply. Again, from a list provided by the DOA, the plants at risk include almonds, apples, apricots, cherries, grapes, hops, maple trees, nectarines, oak trees, peaches, pine trees, plums, poplar trees, sycamore trees, walnut trees, and willow trees. While they're probably being more at risk as the spotted lanternfly spreads to more states with other tasty looking plants to the greedy billionaire lanternfly. Spooky Frieza said in my replies that we should free his boy and that he's innocent, but he has too much faith in his friends. Bro would never infest large areas and damage plant life, and I'm really sorry you had to find out like this, man. It's not easy learning someone you thought you knew is actually a real piece of work behind closed doors. So that's the gist of what we're dealing with. It's definitely a lot, but there are things you can do and genuinely should do if you are able, both in and outside the already affected areas. The USDA has given outlines on what to look for if you suspect there are spotted lantern flies near you and what to do if this ends up being the case. I'll leave a link at the top of this video's description to the full .gov page on their website. If you live in any of the 14 already affected states, the Department of Agriculture has a Let's Play walkthrough on how to report the sighting to your state's relevant department. The level of infestation varies from state to state. Like in Maryland, people in Cecil and Hartford counties no longer need to report sightings because they have been sufficiently accounted for. Basically, shit's bad, we already know they're there. Please stop reminding us, it kind of fucks up our day. But in other counties in Maryland, it's still worth reporting. States also have specific requests for information you should hyperfixate on getting when reporting a sighting. Like in Michigan, it's asked that you take a photo and note the date, time, and location of the sighting, and if possible, to capture a specimen to include in your report to the Michigan Department of Agriculture. When making a report, be sure to check if your state has any specific guidelines on what to do. There may also be more detailed information available on the .gov page for your state's own Department of Agriculture or other equivalent. They might have more detailed instructions on what to do in case you see a spotted lanternfly. To folks who are traveling in or out of the already affected areas, to help prevent these guys from spreading and squatting within your city limits, here's what you should look out for and what you can do. The spotted lanternfly doesn't fly very far. They're like penguins, but way stupider because they can't swim, surf, or dance. But they are stowaways. They hitch rides on stuff over long distances. Starting in autumn, the lanternfly looks for surfaces to poop out big blobs of its eggs onto. These blobs look a little like mud or smeared shit. They might lay these on tree bark, outdoor equipment like bikes, grills, and lawnmowers, and very importantly, they're known to lay eggs on cars and other automobiles. They also are known to abandon their kids on other surfaces, but those are some of the major problem areas. The egg masses themselves are about an inch long and, like I said, look like a smear of mud or diarrhea. If you find them at a place already confirmed to have a spotted lanternfly population, crush them like the Soviets did the fascist and Stalin did to everyone he loved before scraping them off of that surface. If you're a traveler passing through an area with spotted lanternflies, check your vehicles, trailers, and even your clothes very thoroughly for them. Go through your stuff like TSA goes through your junk, both in your bag and in your trunk. Make sure you aren't carrying any potential lanternfly eggs because I'm sure you wouldn't want that shit on your car anyways, and also to make sure you don't spread them to new areas. If you spot, lol, a spotted lanternfly in an area where it hasn't been seen before, do your best to take a picture of that asshole and note the location before you kill it. It's good to have to include in the report. That is understandably difficult as these things are very well known to flit away from you very fast when you try to deliver the boot of justice to them. So mileage may vary on those attempts, but the bottom line is don't let it leave alive. Other things to look out for that could indicate the spotted lanternfly include plants that seem to ooze or weep and have a fermented odor, plants that have a buildup of honeydew, which is a sticky fluid shat out by aphids. This buildup could either be on the plant itself or on the ground below the invested plant. And lastly, look out for sooty mold on infested plants. You know, like Wilbur Sut. It's actually nothing like him at all. But I said his name because I know it'll get the mentally ill part of my audience's attention, and this is important. You're like me, guys. I know how he functions, so listen up. Day-to-day -day things you can do to look out for lanternflies include inspecting trees and plants for signs of this dirty pest.
best, specifically at dusk and nighttime, when these bugs squat up in large amounts near tree trunks or the stems of plants to scam people in Roblox lobbies. SPLs, which is short for spotted lanternflies, definitely eat a variety of plants, but these little shits still love having a taste at home. So if you specifically have Tree of Heaven near you, which looks like this for reference, it's worth scrutinizing those trees even more heavily. Other smooth surfaces like bricks and stone can also play host to these gross lumps of eggs. If you find these eggs on any of the previously talked about surfaces or on your outdoor belongings, you can get rid of them by scraping the eggs into a plastic Ziploc bag filled with hand sanitizer. And afterwards, be sure to zip that bag shut and dispose of that handheld mash grave properly. I know some folks out there are really gentle souls and are kind of against killing bugs in general. I get it. I'm not personally one of them, but I understand. But spotted lanternflies are invasive. And leaving them to do as they please is genuinely more harmful to the environment than summarily executing them ever could be. You're doing your duty as an American by voting and killing these things. There are other helpful resources on that Department of Agriculture page, like a wallet-sized ID card you can print out to keep on you if you're not sure if you found a spotted lanternfly or not. We also have a document called Spotted Lanternfly Lookalikes Guide, which has visuals showing what this bug looks like at all stages of their life, as well as other bugs that get mistaken for spotted lanternflies. Examples include the cinnabar moth and the white line sphinx. There are others, and I definitely recommend taking a look at it yourself. Do your best to make sure that you aren't getting these innocent parts of nature caught in the crossfire while trying to beat the bug. That's the genuine government slogan. I, I kind of like it. I don't know how many quite viewers are parents, probably very few, because none of you are getting laid. But to the four of you out there, the USDA has a whole page of PDFs with children's activity sheets. You can use them to educate your kids on the impending doom SPLs present and bring them up to speed on this holy crusade. There's more resources than just the ones I've listed here available on their site, and I highly recommend you take a look through the Department of Agriculture's page on spotted lanternflies yourself to get familiar with what to do where you live and find what might be relevant to you. If you've got any other information worth sharing, please do so in the comments and be sure to spread the word, either by telling folks yourself, sending them this video, whatever. I just want these fuckers gone. Anyways, this has been quite, and I won't stop till the deed is done.